Okay, um, so next step is going to be uh, Andrew Dredd from Red Hat, Christian Brown from Canonical, talking about optimized content and app migration. Yeah, as Stefan said, um, Adrian and I uh, work together on bringing optimized container lab migration uh, to Lexi and Lexi, um, and we're going to talk about how much time we have while doing this. So, um, first slide, um, those, those are the results. So, um, at the end, we try to make sure that it actually helps what we did, and uh, the red bars are the optimized container migration, and the blue bars are the unoptimized container migration, light migration, and the scale is seconds. So you see for different te test cases, all the um, all time the optimized case um, was uh, was better than the unoptimized case. Um, I will go into details about um, our test cases and all the setup in the. At, at the end, but uh, I just want to start with the results that it actually makes sense what they're trying to do. And now you. Right. So uh, this is just a recap. I'm not going to go into this in any any, any depth because you heard about this uh, a bunch uh, today. Um, so we did this using Lexi, which is the, the system container manager that sits on top of Lexi, which is just a shared library. And the shared library actually does all of the heavy lifting for for live migration. Uh, it has an API that's based on Creo essentially. Um, and what LexD allows you to do by default, and this is all on Tycho, who gave a talk before, uh, is that you can already move containers or live migrate containers uh, between different LexD instances. We have this command called LexD move, and if your container is running and you send it to a remote LexD running on a different host, you can perform uh, live migration. Meaning, uh, oh, who is familiar with the concept of live migration? Okay, cool. So it's basically just you dumping all of the volatile state uh, to disk, you sync over the file system, and then you sync over the volatile state, you restore the task on, uh, on the receiving system, and you're good. Yeah, exactly. So uh, the idea is, as I said before, it's based on Lexi Checkpoint. Lexi Checkpoint is uh, the implementation in the low-level uh, library. Um, and it's based on Creo, uh, so like when a so checkpoint restore in user space, where you snapshot a process, you can imagine it like this, dump its memory state to this, and then you restore it to the, the exact state of execution where you snapshot it. That's, so to speak, the idea, which is a great use space for example databases, any, any kind of scenario where you're really interested in the volatile state of a given process or a process tree. Um, and the migration steps for a, for a container that you move with Lexi move, for example, in this case is you sync the file system uh, while the container is running, you dump all the processes using Creo, which stops the container, and this is, uh, this is crucial, then you transport, transfer all of the volatile states, so everything you dump with disk, uh, to disk with Creo, and then you do a final file system sync, and then you restart the container on the destination, restoring all its volatile state and using Creo again. And the thing is, all of these three steps, uh, using Creo to dump the process, transfer the Creo dump, and, and transfer the file system, in all of these three steps, the container is stopped. So the migration time actually depends on the memory size of the process. This is due to Creo and how long it takes, to, how long it takes Creo to take a snapshot of the given process. And then the file system change rate. So, for example, if you have a lot of I/O on your uh, on the host on the source, and then you have to do a file system sync, you will obviously have to do a lot of uh, transfer uh, I/O. Um, so, pre-copy is essentially a way. Thanks. Um, to optimize uh, to optimize this process at least for uh, at least for the volatile state of a given process. Um, the implementation in well, well basically it uses the soft 30 bit from the page table entry. So this basically just means every time a process writes to uh, to virtual memory, uh, the kernel will set the uh, soft 30 bit in the a bit in the page table entry. At which point you basically know the memory of the of this uh, page table entry has changed. Um, so what what you need to do is you clear the page table entry. And then you wait for the process to do anything interesting, and then you check the page table entry for the soft 30 bit again, and then you know uh, uh, that page has been written to. Uh, so what you do now is then you freeze the process, 
uh, you dump the memory, uh, the process can continue to running, uh, to run, and then you can transfer the memory state uh, to the destination. Um, and the trick is you only dump the memory changes, uh, memory changes which have changed. Um, so you can do this iteratively, right? Every time uh, the process changes, uh, the memory changes, you dump it again, you transfer it again, but you can also use it to calculate the delta, basically meaning you say, given threshold, and when this threshold is reached, I want to do a final dump, and then transfer the rest of the memory state over, uh, and then you can, for example, start with a file system or a final file system sync, and uh, you're done. And um, for completeness, if one can mention the other um, optimization CRIO offers. So CRIO does not only support um, pre-copy migration, you can also do um, post-copy migration. This is based, based on Uberfall and has been developed the last few years by my kids over there and, and me. And um, what you basically do, you, you freeze the process, you transfer only the, really a minimal state from one system to another. And if you have if you have a 100 megabyte process, you want to um, live migrate um, the, the part, which is not memory, is like 200 kilobytes. So you transfer the 200 kilobytes, then you restart the process on the destination system. And once the process keeps running and hits a page which is not there yet, it forwards the page for the user space, and user space can request the page from, from the other system and transfer the page to the other system, to the destination system. And the process can continue running until it hits another page which is, which is missing. And so this is just for completeness. We, we didn't do it for this first round of um, optimizing container migration. And the optimal thing would be the combination of, of both. You first do multiple um, pre dumps until, until you're uh, satisfied with the amount of memory which has been transferred from the source system to the destination system. And at the end, the missing pages you are pulling over um, using lazy migration. So you have the best of both um, approaches and can hopefully decrease the container downtime even further. And, and like I said, we did pre-copy migration, our first approach. And what, so what, what we actually did is we had first a look at low-level um, library LXC, which, um, which we looked at, and the pre-copy migration support um, for LXC actually already existed, um, but as far as I know, it wasn't really used by anybody, and it was actually broken. So not the, the whole thing was broken, but some small parts around it, so we, we had to fix it. This, this was, a, was a quick fix, and it was not really difficult. And to go a step further, further we, we implemented in the low-level library a uh, check if the current platform actually supports pre-copy um, migration support or pre-dumping. And this, the reason for this is this depends on, on many features. It actually depends on the, not really on the architecture, but on the kernel for that architecture, because not all um, architectures kernel architectures are implementing the um, software to did in the page table entry. Then it depends on the kernel version, if it actually knows about um, software to did, and then it has to be enabled to support in the kernel, and then the Creo version needs to be um, new enough to support um, pre-copy migration. And, and all these things can be luckily easily checked by just calling Crew and asking for a certain feature, and we added this whole checking thing into LXC so that we can use it from LXC to detect if the currently running system actually supports pre-copy migration. So um, when when this was done, we, we started to look at LXC and what we are currently doing to um, to pre-copy and to pre copy migrate a uh, container from one system to another. The first step is we check, like I described right now, if, if the underlying systems, both sides, support free copy migration. And if they do, then we check if the user didn't dis disable it, because right now, it's, if the platform supports free copy migration, LXD will always do free copy migration. And if the user 
dislikes it, he can still disable it for the slow or to match overhead or whatever. And then LXP does a first pre-dump of the, of the so it, it still does, the, does all the steps it did before. It, it, it syncs the file system uh, uh, the first time. But then it, instead of doing the one uh, dump of the container, it does a first pre-dump. And then we check if the percentage of pages which are unchanged during the pre-dump iteration are about a certain threshold. The default is 70%. So if 70% of the memory pages do not change, we um, do one final pre-dump and do the, um, the actual migration to the destination system. In addition to the, the, the threshold check, we have also an, uh, another check, um, check the maximum amount of pre-copy cycles so that we don't get into an endless loop and do pre-copy cycles forever because the memory just changes too fast. And if both um, checks are true, then we uh, move the container to the destination side. And those are the, the settings you can set to configure LXD to do pre-copy migration and how you want to do it. So it's, the first one is to disable, enable pre-copy migration. The second one is the threshold in, percent, in, in percentage to, to tell what memory needs to be the same before aborting in the last thing is how many pre-copy cycles you want to do. And I think the uh, threshold is 70% and we do maximum 10 cycles. <coughs> The user does not um, set it to a higher or lower number. <coughs> so, and we were really, really happy. This was really cool that it worked, but uh, we we weren't really sure if it, if it actually helps or if it makes things worse. So we were looking for a test case, and the test case um, was a bit complicated in the beginning to, to find because we wanted to see if the container downtime during migration actually decreases and we wanted to see from the viewpoint of the container. So what we did, we, we have had a, created a process in the container, it allocates one gigabyte of memory and then it reads out the clock, it sleeps for 100 microseconds, it reads out the clock again and we, then we compare those two values and if it's lower than 400 microseconds, uh, then we think we didn't sleep, uh, we didn't miss one of our sleep cycles. And if it's higher than 400 microseconds, then some, something was missing and we could have been migrated. And, and if we do an actual migration, the number of missed sleep cycles is like 20,000. So we're missing a lot of cycles, so the number is really big. There, but we can then read out that number uh, from the from the logs and um, try to calculate <coughs> backwards how much time the process was actually sleeping during the migration. And in addition to um, sleeping, we are also writing one byte in each memory page of the gigabyte of memory, and we do it. We either write no memory, so we just do the sleep cycle, or we write every memory, or we touch every memory page, every second, every fourth memory page, and um, my testing was done on two VMs, and I have a short demo which I can I can show it, and um, it it was using latest LXC LXC from from Git, and that's where I come back to our uh, to our results, and so. The leftmost test case is the memory doesn't change at all. So you see, pre-copy migration is really good because we can do one dump while the container keeps on running and transfer the dump while the container keeps on running. And the actual downtime is really small because the delta we have to transfer is, is like, I don't know, a few k's. And, and because the memory doesn't change. So this is completely a useless test case because it's unrealistic. We have a process which doesn't change its memory. But it's, a, it's a good as a, as a baseline to know how fast it can be. And so if, if our test case is written correctly and we calculated the sleep time correctly backwards from the missing sleep cycles, the actual downtime goes down from like 22 seconds to um, two or three seconds which is pretty nice. 
And uh, the second column is we are changing every fourth byte. And the third is we're changing every second, no, no, every fourth byte, every fourth memory page. The third is we're changing every second memory page. And the last is we're touching every memory page. And I actually don't know why frequency migration is better here. It should actually be worse, but maybe my test case was not perfect. But it was possible. <laughs> so we don't understand the last one, but um, the first three look really good, so um, we're happy there. <laughs> and now, okay, now just just an overview about the um, container runtimes um, I have been working on to, to understand in, in how far they support um, um, container migration and optimize container migration. So LXD, LXC does now um, pre-copy supported uh, container migration. Run C has uh, support for pre-copy and post-copy and a combination of, of both um, optimizations to migrate a container. From Docker, I only know they have some support from Creel but, uh, for container migration without any optimization, but I never actually used it. And now for the demo, so what I have here is a container, it's L time, it's really simple. And and I say LXC move A1 to my another system and I can put a time before. You, you don't see anything, it just moves the container and it's gone. And if I go to my other system and say LXC list now. Now it's here and I can can move it back again. I can One here and back here again. I can also um, enable pre copy support, but unfortunately, this test container is so small that you don't see any difference. So. Yeah. 
so I, I, I don't know just how the TCP sessions are installed. What they do. Hmm? Yeah, so, yeah, that's, that's, that's really a good question, but I don't know. So I've never, whenever I used it, I never did it. But maybe my machines were synced in time, so. But I actually don't know how the, the, the host time relates to the TCP time. Also, I guess. Yeah. Hi, uh, I'm curious. You, you, um, out of the methods you proposed, um, then I, first of all, I'm very interested in using this this kind of stuff. Um, but one thing which I was interested in is you, you mentioned databases, for example, um, as an example of something which you need to keep a lot of state. Uh, another thing which is true about databases is they tend to have a lot of things like critical sections, uh, places where if you have a page fault, uh, things are pretty bad already. Uh, and unfortunately, what you proposed involves a page fault which could take on the order of like a ridiculous amount of time. Um, so is there any way that you can work to prioritize kind of these, these page faults which might end up occurring in critical sections? So, so the question was that about user fault FD and the lazy migration, what happens if a page is missing that is really critical for the process? Uh, I guess my question is like, there are some things which are fine to lazily migrate. There are definitely some pages I definitely don't want lazily migrate. Like, if this page is not here, we should not be running. Um, I, I saw you do have some controls, like, this particular percent should be already there, but do you have, like, the application can specify through some kind of advisory, for example, if this is not here, I cannot run reasonably. No, there's nothing like that. And, and we, we didn't do uh, the, the lazy migration. This was just for completeness what Creo can do. We only do pre copy migration for, okay. for, the, for the LAC integration. Okay. Um, uh, on, as kind of a, a second part to that, um, I'm curious if you thought about using working set metrics to, to work out which pages might be worth prioritizing. So um, I guess this is about Creo's um, lazy migration support and how, how it actually works. Right. Uh, to some extent, I, I guess I'm mostly just curious, like how Creo selects the pages which are which are the most uh, preferable to do to do the instant migration. So, so currently it doesn't work, do, but this is a place where Creo needs uh, development to, to be smarter about its um, lazy migration um, algorithms. So right now it only does you request something, we send it to you, and if if it at some point, it's not in the request that we just push all the all, all the other stuff um, to the to the destination. Cool. All right. Let's talk after about that. Uh, I think we're out of time. So, thank you very much.